Hey everyone, and welcome back to this video on Bio Linux. So, you might know that there have been studies to prove that a certain range of wavelengths can harm and disrupt your sleep cycle, specifically the range of wavelengths that represent blue light. Now luckily, there is an application on Linux which will eliminate the blue light from your devices and help your sleep at night. So this application is called Redshift, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to download, install, and configure it. So let's get started. So here I am fully logged on, and the first step that you want to take is to open up a web browser. So in this video, I'll be using Chromium, and you want to go to the URL jonls.dk slash redshift. So this is the home page, and you have some information, some posts here, but if you look under the download section, you can see that there is a link to GitHub showing you the source code, so just click on that, and this will bring you to the release page. So here, you can see that the current version is 1.11. And here are all the updates that are introduced. So you can download the tar.exe file here, and all the instructions to build and compile it are in that package. But an easy way to install it is just to go to your software center. So I'm on an Arch based system, Antrigos. So I'm just going to go into here and search it up. It is available in the AUR, so that's handy. And just installed that very quickly, and it should be installed. Great. So now that we have it installed, we can actually go ahead and launch it. So let me just close out of these, and you can open up a terminal, and here, just launch that up, and simply type Redshift. So if you get an error with Redshift, then what you have to do is go to your software center and actually install GeoClue. So I already have it installed, which is why I'm not getting any errors here, but just search up GeoClue and make sure you have GeoClue 2 installed. You're going to need that for Redshift to function properly. So you can see that here it's running, and if you want it to actually work properly, you're going to have to enter some more parameters. So let me just cancel this, and let me show you some of the parameters. So the dash L parameter will allow you to specify a location, and this is using latitude and longitude. So if you don't know your exact latitude and longitude, there's a very handy website called latlong.net, which will actually allow you to enter in a place and it'll give you the latitude and longitude. So let me just type in a random place and just hit enter. And you can see that it brings up a place and you can just move around and zoom in and out to get your exact location. And once you have that, you can scroll down and here it shows you the latitude and longitude. So what you do is dash L and the first one is going to be latitude, then colon, and then the longitude. And you hit enter it will properly set your location to the latitude and longitude that you specified. So dash T sets the location, but what if you want to actually set the amount of blue light that gets filtered out? Well, with these kind of applications, it gets specified with color temperature, which is measured in Kelvin. So normally, most computers emit 6500K during the daytime, and nighttime temperature can be anywhere below that. So for me, I like to keep the nighttime around 3000, it's just best for my eyes, but just make sure to experiment and see which one works for you. So to actually change the temperature, you want to run redshift dash T, and the first number is daytime, so 6500 or 5700, they're both very good, and the second one is nighttime. So I'll just set it to 3000, and here it is. So if it's daytime for you, you're not going to notice a difference, but if it's nighttime, then you'll see that this number right here does make a big difference. So now these aren't the only two commands, dash T and dash L. There are many more, but these are just the most used commands and the most helpful. So now I'll be showing you how to use a configuration file to set your settings for Redshift. So what you're going to do is cd into your home folder slash dot config, and then do touch to create a new file, and then just run redshift dot conf. If you're on ls, you should see that file right here. Now you can use any text editor for this. You can do nano or gedit, I'll be using gedit, and then just do gedit redshift.conf. Now there are many different things that you can put into this file, and I'll be walking you through each line. So starting with the first two, you have temp day and temp night, which will set your temperature for each day and night. So temp day, you can just do 6500, temp night, 3000, whatever you want. The next one is transition, and this will set either a direct change from day to night, which is zero, 
and then one which is a gradual change, a fade between the two. Okay, now the next one is brightness. So you can just do brightness and you can set a number between one and zero. Now, if you want to set two different ones for each day and night, then you can do dash day and then dash night. Now the next one is gamma. And for here, you can do either one value, which will apply this gamma to all color channels, or you can add two more values separated by colons to set your gamma for each color channel. And of course, similar, you can do day and night for this one too. Now the next one is location provider, so you can do location dash provider. And for here, you can use GeoClue, GeoClue 2, or manual. So I just suggest using GeoClue 2. It will work the best with most computers, as long as you have GeoClue installed. Next is adjustment method, so adjustment method. And there are two values here that you can set, render or vid mode. Now, I suggest using render. It is newer and works across more computers. But if you're having issues with it, move to vid mode, which is VID, MODE, like that. Now, the next two are setting your location. So lat equals and then long, or sorry, lawn. And for here, you, you can go back to your latlong.net and enter in the values here. So just copy this for lat and then for lawn. I'll use longitude, okay? And finally, you have screen. And this will specify which displays you want to change. So you just don't specify this, it'll apply to all your monitors. But if you do screen zero, which is your one monitor, and then screen one, which is your second monitor, you can do that if you only want to apply it to one or another. So those are the commands. When you're done, make sure to save it, and then close out of it. Now if you try running Redshift again, like so, you might get an error saying unable to load config file, in which case you can just run sudo redshift and everything should work fine, as you can see here. Now the final thing I'm going to show you is how to set redshift to run on startup. So just close out of this. And I mean, it depends on your desktop environment, but I'm using GNOME, so I'll go to GNOME Tweak Tool. And from here, I can add under startup applications, I can click the plus and just search for redshift here it is, and click Add. Now if you're using XFCE, it will be under Session and Startup, and for every other desktop environment, it might be something different, but make sure you have that, so that when you log on to your computer, it automatically starts, and so you don't have to enter the terminal command. So everyone, that's going to wrap up this video. Make sure you install Redshift on your computer, because trust me, it will make a huge difference in your sleep and sleep cycle. Also, keep in mind that the configuration that I used in this video might not work for your eyes, so make sure you tinker around with the settings and make it so that it's best for you. So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe for more awesome Linux videos. As always, thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next video.